Welcome to another edition of Dan 3-Minute Factoids. In this edition, we will be discussing subarachnoid hemorrhages and stents. We recently got posed a question by a diver who had had a subarachnoid hemorrhage in March and was repaired using stents and was now using anticoagulant therapy to prevent further clotting or clotting off of the stents. And the question was whether or not they could dive. Now I'm using this example to answer a couple of questions about the issue. Firstly, a subarachnoid hemorrhage is a bleed between the skull and the brain. It can sometimes happen as a result of trivial trauma, and it can be a massive clot that develops in that area, causing gradual loss of consciousness and sometimes, unfortunately, even death. Drainage, once it's discovered, is relatively easy, but the danger is always that the risk of post-surgical epilepsy. The risk of epilepsy, once one has received surgery to the brain, is exceeded or exceeds the 1% lifetime rule for a period of two to five years. So the bad news is that once one has had significant brain surgery, one should avoid diving for a period of a minimum of six weeks after a significant concussion to between two and five years if in that period Without medication, there has not been any seizure activity. The second component in this particular example is the use of stents. Now, stents, unfortunately, or fortunately, do keep blood vessels open and prevent ballooning blood vessels from bursting. But at the same time, there is usually the requirement for a so-called anticoagulant. That means something that will prevent the blood from clotting. Now, there are two styles of anti-clotting agents. They are either the so-called warfarin or vitamin K antagonist style, which prevent the liver from forming clots or clotting factors. And there are the antiplatelet drugs or the non-vitamin K antagonists. Now on the Coumadin, on the vitamin K antagonist side, one of the dangers is that the dosage can vary or the impact can vary tremendously. And the reason for that is because the organisms in our intestines actually produce vitamin K. And so taking something that is meant to prevent the production of vitamin K is only as good as its absorption and the competition by other organisms. So it's a mixture between how effective the liver is, how uh, competitive other organisms are, how well the absorption works, etc. So it's a mixed bag and for that reason warfarin levels need to be measured regularly. In the beginning, often even more than once a week. On the other side, we have the non-vitamin K uh, agents, and those actually work on blood platelets. Now, to give you a comparison, the warfarin side is like trying to stop jelly forming. On the other side, it's like trying to stop a cork from blocking a blood vessel. Both of those have potential side effects. Both of those can potentially cause bleeding and so the big answer is this. The subarachnoid hemorrhage itself introduces a risk of epilepsy or seizures. And the risks related to the drugs is their unpredictable absorption and the fact that they themselves have side effects. In the end, you need to discuss this with your neurosurgeon, preferably in consultation with a diving doctor. Check out our Dan website, subscribe to us on YouTube, and that will allow you to follow other presentations that we've had on this topic. Thank you for watching.